Thanks for checking out this video. So what is this video really about? Now, I recently, a few months ago, watched the film Spookies for the very first time. Now, that said, I have the review for the film Spookies on my channel, and as a spoiler review, since it's a film from the 80s, um, I give a lot of information in the beginning about all the problems with the film. It's a very storied film for all the issues that occurred um, on the set and off the set and made it basically a disaster of a film. And it's basically two films kind of mashed together. Or really, it's one film that was almost like 90% done or even more than that. And then a not, the first crew or the first filmmakers were fired. They brought in some new filmmakers who just kind of like inserted random stuff that doesn't really work and is terrible into the film. And now you have what you have. So there's a lot of information on what happened with the production. Now you can find articles out there. I talk about it a little bit at the beginning of my review video. And I also talk about it because I have a, um, a review video for the documentary that came with the Blu-ray of the film that Vinegar Syndrome put out. So worth, worth watching the documentary, I think. But um, so I put that out and after putting out the Spookies review and then the documentary review, I had a source come to me and let me know that there's a little bit more information out there or a little bit more information that's not actually out there now, but should be out there for people who are truly fans of Spookies, aka Twisted Souls, or people who just want more information on what was really going on with the film. Now, what I can surmise, or what I do surmise from all the stuff that I've read and um, seen with the documentary as well, a lot of the blame for the film being a mess gets placed on the financier of the film. And... Sure, there, there's a, there are a lot of issues there, but through the interactions I've had with the, the source that came to me, um, I was able to get a little bit of extra information that I want to share with you, and that source also said, I cleared it with them, they said, go ahead, share that information, all good, they just don't want to be known, that's all. So, uh, they also sent me a script, it's the original script for Twisted Souls, so I will, after I talk a little bit about the issues with the film, I will go over what I saw in the script because I read it versus what the film is right now. And actually, the way, the way I did it, people are going to think this is crazy. I literally sat there with my laptop because I had a PDF of it, uh, read a portion of the script, stopped, watched a portion of the film, then paused, then went back to the script, read a portion, and I just kept going back and forth. So it took a while, but it was worth it. It was fun. So I'll point out the things that matter. Not things like the dialogue was a little bit different. They changed it a little bit. That's normal stuff that happens with, with making a film. So I won't go over that stuff. But so like I said, the financier gets a lot of garbage from this. And there are there were problems that started with the financier. And that is that initially the financier had a bunch of footage of this film called The Anger that he wanted to get um, taken care of. He basically didn't know what to do with it. It felt like it wasn't a full film. So he reached out to the filmmakers who ended up being the people who made what became Spookies, but was at that point called Twisted Souls. That's a, on the name on the script. So they came in and they saw an opportunity. Uh, they saw the opportunity to make their own film. They really, really wanted to make one. And they said, you know what, how about instead of taking all this footage from the anger and trying to cobble something together, because it'd be really hard. Um, apparently, the, these, uh, these individuals said that they really couldn't make a film out of it. But there are others who say that you actually could have cobbled something out of it that was decent. You know, he said, she said, we'll see. But, um, well, people may never know. But anyway, so they saw an opportunity. They said, hey, what about if we make a new film, you finance it, and we will make whatever you want. You know, you can have this to your specifics. Like, we can make, instead of taking all this and cobbling something together, why don't we make a new film, and you tell us what you want, and we will deliver on that film. So they started with Twisted Souls. And you you know now what ended up happening with that. Um, so they, they ended up very early on becoming behind in their production schedule and the cost had to go a lot higher as well because budgeting wise they didn't do a good job and my source made it seem like the filmmakers for Twisted Souls were not the best at figuring out their budget one of the main reasons being they weren't talking to the correct people 
who could tell them, well, if you do this, it'll cost this versus if you do this, it'll cost this. Now, one of the big examples of that being <laughs> one of the things that kills the film. There were supposed to be animation effect goats, ghosts, not goats, ghosts in the film. And it's at numerous points. And I'll point out where that was supposed to be when I go over the script versus the film portion of this video. So there's supposed to be ghosts. That's a very important part of the film, really. And they, were, they show up a few times. So that was supposed to be animation effects. So it was assumed that the film was going to be shot on 16 millimeter film. And it would be cheap to do those animation effects for that. Now, instead, they decided to go with 35 millimeter film, did not let anyone who would have needed to know that information know that information, and then budgeted only $10,000 out of the $250,000 budget for the film towards the animation effects, and that couldn't be done. Uh, the, the actual cost, the figure that I, I came across was... Uh, between two and six thousand dollars per shot uh, for the 35 millimeter animation effects and there were 60 of those in the film so you figure the math on that it's way above ten thousand dollars so in the end you don't have those animation effects so that's how things started going downhill but additionally actual days and time wise from what I'm told uh, there was lighting. They had too much lighting in the film. And if you watch it, you can kind of see those areas where there is too much light in the film. Uh, and apparently the person who had the equipment was bringing the lighting in and the, it was too much. It was just too much lighting. And for that reason, whenever they're changing the scenes, they need to move the lighting. And since it was more than you would typically need for a film that they were erroneously using... It took a lot more time to move the, the lights and get things all set up and ready to go. So that is where a lot of the production time ended up becoming a problem. Now, obviously, when your production time stretches longer than you need it, to, well, than it should be or that it's budgeted for, people have to get paid. And so the budget gets higher. And then the whole thing about the animation effects, and they were doing a lot of practical effects as well that they were trying to put out there. And I will say, in the film, if you've watched it, Great practical effects. It looks good. And there is a good concept for a film there. There could have been a good film there. But there's so many issues that happen. Another one of the issues that happened is apparently there was a crew member who was a big-time bully on the set. Nobody liked this individual. And at least two people ended up quitting the crew because they couldn't stand the abuse from this person. And one of the examples I was given of what this person would do is they would actually make fun of the actors while they're doing scenes. Which is insane because you're going to throw the actors off their game. You know, you have to get in the zone. You have to, you know, get your lines down. You have to get the feeling of what you're going to be doing. And when you're delivering your lines, when you're doing a scene, you have to be immersed in that. You have to be able to focus. And if there's someone off to the side making fun of you, I mean, let alone just someone talking, it's going to throw you off and it's going to destroy things. And uh, that's just terrible. So apparently this person was very verbally and uh, emotionally abusive to a lot of people. And like I said, two people actually ended up quitting because of that situation. Now, there were things that were the problem of the financier or were done because of the financier, like in the documentary they were talking about. You know, the, the dirt monsters in the basement with the farting noises. Apparently the financier loved fart noises and they worked it into the to the film. I think that's funny now, but I realize that, you know, it may have been better without that in the film. Now, those types of things, you know, it's a problem. Now, apparently the financier didn't really start getting involved more with the film. It was actually very hands-off up until the point where the production started going too long and the cost started going up, which... You know, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. If I was paying for something and people said, here's how we're going to do everything, um, and they're not hitting their timeline and they're not hitting the budget especially, I'm going to say, I need to come and see what's going on. I need to get more involved. So the way the story's kind of out there now is that he was just involved with his hands and everything from the, from the get-go. And apparently that's not true. He just got more involved when budget started going up and it was going to take way longer 
One of the problems is apparently the initial filmmakers didn't want to say no to the financier because of how they got him to say yes to making Twisted Souls. Um, they basically said, we'll do what you want. So they just kept saying, yes, yes, yes. He did come to them with ideas saying, I would like to do this and I would like to do this and I'd like to do this. And they're like, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. But weren't revising their budget. And apparently they had no backup plans for if they went over budget, which apparently is a thing that people plan for, but they had no plans. So just not good. So really after learning all this information, what occurs to me is that this film may have been doomed from the get go. Um, although by the end there, there wasn't that much left to shoot before the original filmmakers were fired and they went with someone else, which by the way, the other people they went, went with, uh, had been involved in the porn industry and there is a, um, so apparently the way that came about was exactly the way everything came about with Twisted Souls and the footage with that movie, The Anger, uh, where the, the initial filmmakers for Twisted Souls have been fired at that point. There's all this footage. The film's not done, even though it was not all that far from being done. Um, the financier's trying to figure out what to do with it. Someone involved in porn says, hey, um, I could take that and do something with it. But let me give you my idea. And they obviously want to put more of their stamp on it. So they add all this extra stuff being... Well, a lot of stuff. I'll talk about it in the later portion here. But a lot of stuff that makes no sense and kills the film, basically, if you were to read the script, which obviously I did. So, yeah. Um, now, there is a rumor out there. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to put too much stock into that because I could see where it comes from as just being a rumor and not really being substantiated. But apparently there's a rumor that the individual who talked the financier into handing over the Twisted Souls footage to make it what it is now, um, used sexual persuasion in order to seal that deal. Now, these types of things get said a lot, and that's why I'm saying I'm kind of dismissing it as just a rumor, because it's hard to substantiate something like that, and I could see where, just because the person was involved in porn, people would just make an assumption, oh, well, there was a sexual favor given or something like that. So I'm inclined not to believe that necessarily. But what I do believe is that the film was irreparably messed up. Now, apparently they did try to get the crew members back, uh, mainly the cast. Uh, they may have try and tried to get some of the crew members back, but they really tried to get the cast back so they could try and fit, finish out the film how it was done in the script. But the problem is the crew members did not want to come back uh, because they felt a loyalty and allegiance to the initial filmmakers who were fired. So, what are you going to do? Uh, I I would have chosen to, <laughs> to to do more subtle things to the film uh, instead of what actually ended up happening, but that's just me, you know? Uh, <laughs> I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything else that was really important. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I covered everything that I wanted to reveal about that, but the big thing being the ghost. Now, let let me go over the um, what I saw between the script and the film. So instead of the beginning with the old sorcerer, the woman in the casket, um, the random kid, the random guy in the woods who I don't, you know, is talking to the kid like he's a, a pedophile. I don't know. Uh, and the flamboyantly dressed Catman, which I cannot stress how much I hate that character, and they show up way too much in the film and make no sense. Well, none of that stuff really makes sense. Um, instead of all that, what was supposed to be the beginning of the film, actually, was a hobo who stumbles across this house and tries to stay in the house for the night, but is attacked by unseen forces and sent fleeing from the house. Now, there's a callback to that that ended up being in the film where the character of, I think it was Dave, uh, at one point when he's having a um, heated argument with Adrian, pulls out some blackberry brandy and starts drinking it. Now, that's brandy that he found inside the house, and that brandy in the beginning was supposed to have, it, it was supposed to be, have, be seen by the audience that that brandy was left by the hobo who was attacked by the unseen forces and fled. So it was, a, it was supposed to be a callback, and now it's just some random brandy bottle. 
In the script, the steering wheel, when everyone's driving to the house, the steering wheel was supposed to be jerked a few times by an unseen force. That actually didn't end up happening. There was also supposed to be rumbling uh, coming from the graves in the front yard of the house. That didn't end up making in the film. Um, the part inside the house where they go into the closet initially uh, and the dead body falls out and it's holding that Ouija board... That the body was also at that point supposed to be holding a strange glass bottle, which you see one like it later in the film, towards the end of the film, the one that kind of has like that otherworldly type acid in it, basically. Um, but since it's not in the film, it makes kind of no sense when Peter references it, because Peter Peter does reference it when they find the bottle eventually. He references that the corpse had one in its hand, but you don't see it in the film. So it's one of those things where, you know, continuity issue for, for that reason. Uh, the answers to questions asked the Ouija board end up coming, while well, we're in the script, supposed to come from kind of like an unexplained place. Uh, but the second crew ended up making the answers coming directly from the sorcerer himself. Because you see that, that cutaway where the sorcerer's talking and then it's giving the answers. Well, the answers were just supposed to be coming out of nowhere in the script, which are more mysterious and more interesting. The whole sorcerer thing, obviously, is just uh, terrible. Uh, in fact, uh, everything really emanates from the sorcerer in the film, the way it is now, but with the way the script was, everything was supposed to really be emanating from the Ouija board itself. In fact, it was supposed to be a situation where all the... Uh, drawings of the creatures that end up showing up in the movie were supposed to be on the board and it meaning that the Ouija board had trapped their souls basically in the board like when they were playing with it it was channeling these these creatures through or the souls of these creatures through the board and each time when Carol had become kind of possessed by a creature when she was going through and she was like using the board as a you know this messed up creature she was summoning from within the board these creatures that would then materialize in the house and what was supposed to end up happening in the end which there's dialogue about it that didn't make it into the film ultimately is that these people who showed up in the house are supposed to end up getting killed and then their souls would basically be trapped by the board in place of these creatures basically which is a much better story than this whole the sorcerer is just controlling everything, which seems very lazy and dumb, uh, in my opinion, you know. Uh, when Carol turns into the creature and starts fighting her friends in the script, she states that they will all die and replace the spirits tied to the board. That's where it comes in initially, uh, and that's obviously overridden by the whole sorcerer thing. When some of the characters run from the house, that is when the ghosts were supposed to show up. And you'll see Dave, the character of Dave at one point, is like doing some like ducking and making some weird movements, which just looks weird and out of place because they didn't put the animation effects in because it ended up costing too much. So, uh, yeah, so that speaks to how important that does. Uh, that was. When they try to leave the house a second time, it was the ghosts that come at them, not zombies. And this is kind of another thing that ended up happening where... The initial filmmakers did want to use zombies in the film, but the lawyer for the financier had convinced them that they couldn't because zombies belonged to George A. Romero and George A. Romero would, would potentially end up suing them. Well, as we see, the second crew ended up using zombies. So what happened there? All of a sudden, the lawyer said, oh, no, you're fine. I don't get it. I think a lot of people didn't get it. So that that's one of those weird things. You know, maybe that wasn't so much the financier. Maybe he didn't know what the lawyer was telling them, but just another one, another twist of these issues. Uh, there was supposed to be a scene with Rich, Peter, and Megan running into Carol. Then they get separated uh, from Rich, who gets trapped with Carol, who eventually ends up kind of disappearing. This, some, this happens a little bit. Like, for the most part, it happens, but it ends up getting cut up in a much different order. In the script, it's in one chunk. It happens linearly, in a linear way. But in the film, it gets cut up a lot and kind of like littered more throughout the film than it was supposed to be. 
Duke and Linda going into the basement and getting attacked by the farting dirt people was initially supposed to happen a lot later in the film. In the script, it happens way, 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 way later. You actually don't see Duke and Linda for quite a while in the script until the basement scene much later. Uh, the blackberry brandy that Dave drinks when he argues with Adrian was from the hobo, like I said. Uh, there was supposed to be a scene where Carol says some words and a picture of the Spider Woman vanished from the Ouija board. Actually, every single instance of one of the creatures showing up right before it was supposed to show her using the Ouija board and then not just pointing to the picture like it is in the film now, but point to the picture and you would see it disappear and then the, you would see the creature appear in the scene. The scene of Rich and the Spider Lady is much earlier in the script. That happens very early in the script. The scene of Adrian fighting the little green creatures is written in a much smoother manner that you actually know what's really going on. Within the film, it's so chopped up and messed up that it's hard to really know what's going on. In fact, the first time I watched it, I thought she was just fighting one creature. She is fighting two, but it's kind of hard to tell with the way they kind of chopped it up. Uh, and in the script, it's very clear, and it seems a lot smoother of, of a scene. So, yeah. In the script, the scene of Adrienne in the hallway getting shocked and then her face ending up melting, which I think looks good in the film, by that big tentacle creature, was really close to the end of the film instead of being so early on. The demon with the scythe, which looks great, was supposed to skewer Duke with its blade and then throw him. Now, the way it plays out in the film now, it just like, he, he swipes at him, you see like this quick slash that he gets, and then he goes flying across the room for some reason. So that's another big difference. I, I mean, obviously what was in the script was better. Uh, once the fight goes to the ledge, the outside ledge of the house, they were supposed to have ghosts flying around them at that point. So here the ghosts come into play once again. So not only were they trying to get away from the the creature with the scythe at this point but the ghosts are flying all around them and trying to attack them as well so much better scene again when peter linda and megan find carol at the end of the film unearthly lights are supposed to illuminate the entire room not just sticks with fire on them and the ouija board was supposed to end up being like levitating uh, the whole end of the film, when you see the Ouija board, it's supposed to be levitating all those times, and, and they just didn't do that. At the end, as Peter, Linda, and Megan are running from the house, the ghosts were supposed to be sucked into the glowing house. When they were running out at the very, very end of the film, the ghosts were still supposed to be out there, but then eventually they would get sucked into the house, the house would end up glowing brightly, and then it was going to disappear as the tombstones were melting away out of the front yard. Obviously, it's a very different ending, a not good ending. Um, and it was supposed to be like an explosion of light for the house. Uh, and in the very after that, what was in what was supposed to end up happening is that, you know, like I said, Peter, Megan, and Linda made it out. Linda wasn't doing well. She ends up dying. Peter and Megan stand up, and they're kind of too over it i guess i don't want to say over it too exhausted too uh focused on just surviving that they kind of see linda's dead and they're like you know what are you gonna do and they start going to leave and right as they go to leave linda's corpse pops up grabs them both by the throats and it goes to black as you i i believe there's also supposed to be a laugh being heard in the night and that was supposed to be the actual ending, which, in my opinion, is a much better ending, much better ending than uh, what we ended up getting from that second crew. Yeah. So, that's basically all I have to have. I want to thank my source for the information and being able to put my eyes on the script. That was awesome. I want to thank everyone who's interested in Spookies and nerdy like me for watching this video. Or even if you're not and you just watched it this whole time thank you i don't know why you did but yeah thank you thanks for allowing me to get nerdy and you know giving me an outlet but uh very interesting hey if there are other people out there who want to feed me information on other films that have these crazy storied pasts i would be down to do more of these but yeah regardless thanks for checking this out do me some favors you can go ahead and put comments down here tell me whatever you want about this um, if you have additional information that you think you want to throw out there too, feel free to do that. 
do me a big favor, hit the subscribe button for me, please. I really do appreciate that. Uh, that's your best way to repay me because I'm just doing this for free. I'm doing it for fun, for the love of horror and all these wacky movies. Uh, so that would be awesome. Also, hit the notification bell if you're going to do that. That way you know whenever I'm putting up new videos or doing live streams. But regardless, I appreciate you taking the time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.